the solutions of the equation z to the fourth plus 4z cubed i minus 6z squared minus 4zi minus i is equal to zero are the vertices of a convex polygon in the complex plane. What is the area of the polygon? Well, I see two things. I see two things when I look at this equation. The first thing that just jumps out at me is that we have the coefficients 1, 4, negative 6, negative 4, negative 1. And I recognize 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 as one of the rows of the Pascal's triangle. And when you look at Pascal's triangle, you have 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So we have this row of binomial coefficient for the power, for the power of fourth. And not only that, I see that we have i, then we have negative 1, we have negative 6, or negative 1 times 6, and that's reminding me of i squared. And seeing this negative i is reminding me of i cubed. So, Naturally, since we have fourth power with the corresponding binomial coefficients, and we somehow seem to see that this increasing power of i while decreasing power of z, it seems like we should relate our equation to z plus i to the fourth, which is z to the fourth plus four times z cubed i plus 6 times z squared i squared plus 4 times z i cubed plus i to the fourth. And expanding this, we get z to the fourth plus 4 z cubed i plus i squared is negative 1. So let's write this as negative 6 z squared and i cubed is negative i. So we have negative 4 z i plus i to the fourth, which is 1. And realize that our expansion is almost exactly the equation given to us, except that instead of plus 1, we have minus i. The rest are equivalent. z to the fourth plus 4z cubed i minus 6z squared minus 4zi. So we know our expression, so we know our equation can be written as z plus i to the fourth except that we gotta take away 1, and we should take away an extra i. So we also wanna take away negative i, and we want to solve this equation for 0. So we have z plus i to the fourth is 1 plus i. And one nice simplification we can make is that we can ignore this plus i, because adding this plus i to z is only shifting the entire, entire graph in the complex plane down by i. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, remember that in the real plane, so in the real plane, real xy plane, when you have graph of y equals x squared, it goes like this, so that's how it goes. And when you're graphing y equals to x plus 1 squared, that's going to shift the entire graph down by 1. So you're going to have this graph instead. And the same thing applies in the complex plane. In the complex plane. Let's compare this equation to a more simplified equation z to the fourth is 1 plus i. Well, if z to the fourth is 1 plus i, graphs like, I'm not quite sure how it graphs, but let's say we have some polygon like this. So let's say that's the graph of z to the fourth is 1 plus i in the complex plane. So that's the real part that goes up by 1, and the imaginary part that really goes up by i. So you can think of imaginary part as going up by i, while the real part is going up by 1. So when you're doing plus i to this equation, it's essentially going to shift the entire polygon down by i. So we are going to have a new graph that goes like this. So it's the same concept. When you do plus 1 in the real plane, it goes down by 1. And when you do plus i in the complex plane, it's going to go down by i. And of course, we are looking at the area of the polygon. And since translating the entire polygon is not going to change the area, we can look at this equation instead of this equation. And of course, this equation is easier to work with. Now, whenever you have powers of the complex variable, it's always nice. It's always nice to write everything in the exponential form. 
in the exponential form of complex numbers, which is r times e to the i data, where in the complex plane, in the complex plane, r is the distance from the zero, distance from the origin. So you know this distance is r, and data is the angle from positive real axis. So it's easier to write everything in the form r times e to the i data. And of course, 1 plus i is very easy to write in exponential form. Because this point is 1 plus i, you know this has length of 1, this has length of 1. So you know the hypotenuse is square root of 2, and we have pi over 4 as our angle. So we know 1 plus i is square root of 2, r, times e to the i to the pi over 4. And what's going to happen when you take the fourth root? Well, you remember. You remember from roots of unity, roots of unity, and if you remember roots of unity, such as z to the power of 3 is equal to 1, we had, we had three points, we had three points in the complex plane that make up a regular triangle or equilateral triangle. So when we are solving z cubed this one, we get this equilateral triangle. When we solve z to the fourth this one, we get this square, we get this square, like this. And when we solve z to the fifth is one, in the complex plane, we get a regular pentagon. And if I can draw that regular pentagon, you're going to have something, something like this. So you, for z to the fifth, you're going to have regular pentagon. And of course, for z to the fourth, we have a square. And in our case, we have we don't have one. We don't have z to the fourth is equal to one, but we have z to the fourth is equal to square root of two times e to the i times pi over four. But what's this e to the i times pi over 4 doing? Well, that's specifying the angle. Because we have pi over 4, which is data. So we, e to the i pi over 4 is specifying the angle, while square root of 2 is specifying the absolute value or the distance from the origin. Distance from origin. And really, you know the equation of z to the fourth is square root of 2 e to the i times pi over 4 is going to be the same. It's going to be oriented in almost the same way as z to the fourth is 1, except we have a different angle and we have different distance from 0. Well, different angle doesn't really matter because rotating a square, rotating a square to different angle, you still have the same area. What's more important is this distance from zero, because making the square larger, making the square larger changes the area. So we don't really have to focus on this e to the i times pi over 4, because all it's doing is specifying an angle. We only have to pay our attention to square root of 2. So let's do so. What is the value of our z? Well, our z is going to be 2 to the, square root of 2 is 2 to the 1 half, so taking the fourth root gets us 2 to the 1 eighth times some angle, times e to the i some angle. But really, this angle part does not matter because we know, we know we're going to get a square when we solve an equation of the form z to the fourth is a complex number. Really, all we care about is that, that this distance from zero is 2 to the 1 eighth. So we know this distance is 2 to the 1 eighth, 2 to the 1 eighth, 2 to the 1 8, and we wish to find the area of this square. And of course, area of this triangle, area of this purple triangle, is base times height over 2, or 2 to the 1 fourth over 2, or 2 to the negative 3 fourths. And we have four of those. We have four of those triangles that make up our square. So the area of our square is 2 to the negative 3 fourths times 4, or 2 squared, which is 2 to the 5 fourths, because 2 is 8 fourths, 8 fourths minus 3 fourths is 5 fourths. And we are done. We know the area of this polygon is 2 to the 5 fourths, or D.